Hello, economics students. Today we're going to be going over the Unit 5 activity, which has to do with trade agreements between the U.S. and other countries. Um, I'm going to change up the assignment quite a bit, and you're going to see why, and I'll explain some of the reasons why as we go. But um, uh, for the most part, I think it's more beneficial the way I've changed it up. I hope it'll make more sense and it'll be easier to uh, write your essay, write the answers to these questions and so forth. So um, let's go ahead. I'm going to make myself small here. And then let's go ahead. And when you get to the activity, you want to click on this link here. And you want to click on use template. This will give you like a Google, a Google uh, Forms type thing. OK. Um, let's go ahead and move, move myself over here. OK. So. Let's go ahead and, um, you know, you could read this stuff if you want, but mostly let's just kind of go down. I'm going to start reading here, directions and analysis. So if you can, hopefully you have this open already, and we're going to go, please follow along as I read this out loud. It says, the International Trade Administration, the ITA, is a division of the U.S. Department of Commerce that focuses on the nation's trade issues and helps companies do business in and with other countries. The ITA website contains a wide variety of information on issues related to international trade. Read about the trade agreements the US, United States is currently negotiation, negotiating, uh, including the countries slash regions involved, and answer the questions that follow. So here's where I'm going to change it up a little bit. So we're not going to look at uh, a trade agreement that the U.S. is currently negotiating. We're going to look at a trade agreement that the U.S. is already part of. Um, and and if you want to, you can just go ahead and do it the way they asked. But I'm telling you, it's going to be harder. I tried to do one of the current ones they're negotiating, and it was hard to find information on. It was hard to uh, get a sense of what was happening. But if instead we use a trade agreement that's already established, um, then it's a lot easier to find information about it. And, and more specifically, we're going to go over the North American Free Trade Agreement. Okay, So where it says choose a trade agreement that the U.S. is currently negotiating that you would like to learn more about. So we're going to do the North American Free Trade Agreement. All right, knows what I want. Also known as NAFTA. Okay. Now, the reason why we want to go over this specific free trade agreement, well, it's a very influential one. Uh, it's a very important one when it comes to the economy, not just of the U.S., but also of Canada and Mexico, which those three countries, U.S., Canada, and Mexico, are the three countries involved in this free trade agreement. So, we're going to be covering it, and it's it's been around for a while, so there's a lot of research on it. There's a lot of writing on it. It's a lot, a lot easier to find information about it, okay? So what we're going to do right here for part B, it says countries or regions involved, trade agreements. Go ahead and click on trade agreements here, and it should open a link. Go ahead and click on that. It takes you to the ITA website, the International Trade Administration website. And what we want to do is go down free trade agreements. So let's go to free trade agreements. Click on this. Scroll down a little bit more. You can go ahead and click on Canada here. And you can see it says including the North American free trade agreement. In other words, NAFTA. That's what we're looking at. Okay. So let's go ahead and click on that. And this gives us some information here about NAFTA. Okay. So we can see all kinds of different things here. And a lot of you know, you can just click on the different chapters you want to go to. The one I want to look at right now is called the preamble. Okay, so we're going to click on preamble. And this tells you basically some of the things that that this trade agreement is supposed to do. Okay, so it talks about the government of Canada, the government of the United, yeah, United Mexican States, and the government of the United States of America resolved to all this stuff. Okay, so you can see strengthen the special bonds of friendship and cooperation among their nations. Contribute to the harmonious development and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we got all that stuff there. So hopefully you've gotten to there. Um, again, from here, 
or from the ITF website, make sure to click on free trade agreements. That's here. Then click on Canada or you can click on Mexico and it'll bring you to uh, the NAFTA uh, here. Click on the preamble. That's where I'm at right here, NAFTA preamble. Now, if you ever wanna go back to the NAFTA index, you go and click on this and you can go ahead and look at the different chapters. We might be looking at some of this information later, so, but let's just go ahead and click on the preamble. This is what we're gonna be using right now. Okay, so I don't need that anymore. Okay, if you haven't already, click the link, blah, blah, blah. You may have to go to this website. List five main points of this potential agreement. So here we wanna write five main points and you know maybe we could do bullet points here. You know, let's, let's do some bullet points. Um, and you could use any of these points right here from the preamble, okay? That's what I would suggest. And you could just take it straight from here, okay? So, you know, there we go. You know, and pick, pick the five that you like the most, all right? Uh, notice that uh, here, look, it didn't, it didn't, doesn't have the same um, format, you know? So one thing you could do is, I'm gonna highlight some of this, go to Format Painter, and then go ahead and go over that. Ah, notice it, it automatically changes it to the right format, and I like that. Okay, strengthen the special bonds of friendship, cooperation among the nations. Okay, now I want five of these bullet points, and you can pick any five from this list. Okay, pretty straightforward. Okay, pick ones that you would feel comfortable writing about because there's gonna be a more writing portion later on about like what this free trade agreement does, how it helps us, how it doesn't help us, how, how it's involved, how whatever. Okay, so pick five of those. All right, what are the major regions and industries that the agreement would positively affect? Okay, so for that one, I actually pulled up a different website. So I'm going to go to this website here and this article on Inc. So you could find this this website, this article. I just kind of put in North American Free Trade Agreement and then uh, you could put in Inc. Google search it. It'll come up. This article. Okay. So one of the things, and this article actually answers, going to be answering a lot of our questions, and we're going to uh, reference this article at the end, so make sure you don't close out of this, because we're going to use the, um, we're going to have to copy and paste the URL so that we're referencing, we're showing that we're referencing it, right? Okay. So one of the things we're going to be doing here, uh, what are some of the major regions and industries that the agreement would positively affect? So. You can, let's go ahead and scroll down. And like one of the main ones here, you wanna talk about agriculture. That's gonna, that's one of the main ones that NAFTA affects is agriculture. A lot of our agriculture uh, ends up going to, you know, Mexico and Canada because we have those, that free trade agreements. Um, and which, you know, they, they really, they really benefit from getting our agriculture from the U.S., but also we benefit as well. You might notice from in like supermarkets and stuff, like avocados usually say like from Mexico, right? Um, so, so we could talk about free trade in agriculture. Okay, that's one of the industries. Uh, textile and apparel barriers. Okay, telecommunications. See, it mentions a lot of different things, right? Um, one of one of the other ones I really want to look at too that you should probably mention is increased protection for intellectual property rights. So what that means is like, um, let's say we have a intellectual property from the U.S. Let's say Mickey Mouse, and in this this uh, protection makes it so you know there can't be like a Canadian version of Mickey Mouse, and they just have their own Mickey Mouse and they uh, profit off that. No, they can't do that anymore because this protection makes it so uh, intellectual property rights are protected across all of three of those countries. So that's an important aspect as well. So, but you can see from this, from this article, you can see all these different industries that are affected positively. So when you 
write this response where major regions and industries that are affected, right? So you can mention agriculture, intellectual property, right? And make sure you answer in a complete sentence. So you just write three. Um, we'll do, we'll just write three of them, right? Three major um, industries. That NAFTA positively affects our agriculture, um, intellectual property. And, and then you could pick one other one from that. Okay. So here's where also it kind of changes the assignment a little bit because it says, what are some of the uh, current tariffs or barriers to trade? Uh, hopefully you already know what a tariff is, but a tariff is like basically a tax um, that countries put on imports. So basically it kind of levels the playing field for domestic um, goods. So for example, let's say, let's say you wanted to get a car from Japan, okay? So when that Japanese car is coming over, there's a tax that has to be paid um, in order for American car manufacturers not to be just, you know, uh, to lose out basically. So there's, a, there, and that tax that's paid is called a tariff, a tariff. Um, so, with a free trade agreement though, the tariffs were greatly lowered and, mo and a lot of tariffs were just removed altogether. So between Canada, US and Mexico, there are a lot fewer tariffs because of NAFTA. There are a lot smaller tariffs because of NAFTA. I think all tariffs are gone now between those three countries because of NAFTA, but you can look, let's go back here. Okay. Um, so prior, prior to NAFTA, okay, you can see right here, this very first bullet point right here, tariff elimination for qualifying products. So before NAFTA, tariffs of 30% or higher on export goods to Mexico were common, as were long delays caused by paperwork. Um, additionally, Mexican tariffs on US made products were on average two. 250% higher than U.S. duties on Mexican products. NAFTA addressed this imbalance by phasing out tariffs over 15 years. Approximately 50% of the tariffs were abolished immediately when the agreement uh, took effect and the remaining tariffs were targeted for gradual elimination. So you could just, I want you to just use the information basically from this bullet point, put it in your own words, and put it right here as the answer for this question. Okay? So... Again, you could talk about how there was tariffs of 30% on goods to Mexico, and also there were um, Mexican tariffs on U.S. made products were on average 250% higher than U.S. duties on Mexican products, okay? Um, you could talk about how there was a lot of long delays and paperwork um, when you wanted to import and export across the border. So those were more or less eliminated through NAFTA. Okay, so those are some of the things you wanna put there. Now, whatever information you gather from another source, we want to make sure, and this goes for the last problem too, I should, probably should have mentioned it. You, you know, you could just put in brackets here and you could put, um, It's the publisher here, and the name of the article is North American Free Trade Agreement. Okay, NAFTA. That way you're showing where you're getting this information from. Okay, now at the end, we're also going to paste a link to the article so that, you know, people who want to read it 
or your teacher will be able to see exactly where you got this information from. Okay. And that goes for any anytime you reference or you get information from another site, you're going to reference it like that. Okay. Um, how will consumers benefit from the free trade agreement? Okay, so a couple things for consumers. Um, obviously, it allows consumers to buy cheap products made from the other countries. Um, particularly in the U.S., like I said, we get a lot of cheap agriculture uh, from Mexico, right? So it allows us to get, like I said, avocados or other fruits and vegetables. Those are big things. Um, also, it, it makes a lot of other items cheaper, things that are manufactured in Mexico, for example. They would be manufactured at a cheaper price, mainly because they'd be able to pay uh, less money over there, right? And Mexico has um, not as strong of regulations. So companies can make, make things over there cheaper. And then when they come over here, there's no tariff, there's no tax because of NAFTA. And then we're able to buy things a lot cheaper. So for example, a company that makes shirts might build a factory in Mexico, then the shirts get manufactured there, they come to the US, and now we're able to buy them very cheaply. So for us, it gives us, uh, for consumers, it gives us a wider variety of things that we can get from Canadian and Mexican um, factories and businesses. And on top of that, it makes the makes those things cheaper. Okay, cheaper. Okay. Find at least two Congress members or industry leaders who are in support of this agreement and explain why they support it. Okay, so for that, we're going to go to our good old friend Wikipedia. Now, a lot of teachers say, hey, don't don't go to Wikipedia. It's not a legit source. Well, if you're taking a direct quote, I don't see any problem with it, honestly. It's as good as a uh, as an encyclopedia, right? So what we can do is we're going to actually look for two politicians or industry leaders that agree or say that NAFTA is a good thing, and then we need to find at least one that says NAFTA is a bad thing, okay? So right here, I'm just on the... I'm just on the NAFTA uh, Wikipedia, right? North American Free Trade Agreement Wikipedia page, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and... Um, I found some good quotes earlier from here. Okay, here's one. So you could use this right here. Tufts University political science scientist Daniel Day Dresner argued that NAFTA made it easier for Mexico to transform to a real democracy and become a country that views itself as North American. This has boosted cooperation between the United States and Mexico. Okay, so you just take that, take that information, um, and uh, yeah, so that's one. You could also use this one right here. Um, University of California, San Diego, economics professor Gordon Hansen said that NAFTA helped the U.S. compete against China and therefore save U.S. jobs. While some jobs were lost to Mexico as a result to NAFTA, considerably more jobs have been lost to China if not for NAFTA. Okay, so here's someone who's arguing that, um, that NAFTA has actually brought in jobs. Yes, some jobs went to Mexico, so manufacturing jobs and things went to Mexico, but it would have been even worse if we didn't have NAFTA because then more of those jobs would have went to China. That's what he's arguing. Okay, um, so that's a couple of instances of people, industry leaders who are in support of NAFTA, more or less. Okay, then for one that's against that, you could look at this one right here from Ross Perot. Notice that you could use this as a direct quote. So um, you could say some, you know, make sure when you're when you're stating that this is a quote, you know, you'd say, according to Ross Perot, comma, quotation mark, right? So you could, and this would be, um, I showed you the two, 
right? For Part F, the two Congress members or industry leaders who supported it. And then for the one that didn't support it, that's the Ross Perot quote, we could say, according to Ross Perot, um, quotation marks, and let's go ahead and see. We have got to stop sending our jobs overseas. It's pretty simple. If you're paying 12, 13, 14 dollars an hour for a factory worker and you can move your factory south of the border, pay a dollar an hour for labor, have no health care, that's the most expensive single element in making a car, have no environmental controls, no pollution controls, and no retirement, and you don't care about anything but making money, there will be a giant sucking sound going south. When Mexico's jobs come up from a dollar an hour to six dollars an hour, and ours go down to six dollars an hour, and then it's leveled again. But in the meantime, you're wrecking the the country with these kinds of deals. Okay, so that's that's what he was saying here. That um, basically, if you have the option to hire cheap labor, you're going to take it. You know, corporations are basically just built on the idea of trying to maximize uh, profit margins and to grow their company. So uh, the company has all the incentive in the world to hire cheap labor across the border, as opposed to paying, uh, you know, 12, 13, $14 an hour to a U.S. worker. Okay. And they don't have to pay health care and they don't have to worry about environmental controls and they don't have to worry about pollution or retirement. Um, in they hire, when they hire Mexican workers. That's what he's arguing. So just make, you could use part of this quote or the whole thing. And if you are using the quote, just make sure, you know, so you, know, you put down so what he said, right? use whatever port, you know, put down some of that quote here, right? So put the quote right here and then explain what he's saying. Okay, so give a brief explanation of, of what he's saying or, or whatever, right? Just like I did, right? It makes sense for corporations to want to hire cheaper labor if they can, and they'll have that option if they move their factories or their business to Mexico, and that'll increase the, those workers' wages, but it'll depress U.S. workers' wages. That's what he's arguing, Okay. Um, how will this agreement benefit the U.S. economy overall? Okay, so again, we can go to this Inc. Um, article here. Okay, so it talks about a lot of different ways that it could potentially benefit the U.S. economy. Okay, increased investment opportunities. Um, liberalized regulation of land transportation. Um, expanding the rights of American firms to make bids on Mexican and Canadian government procurement contracts. Um, re, you know, all this stuff here, right? So, um, okay, so you could use basically any, any parts of this, put in your own words and put it there, okay? Pick the parts that you'd want to write the most about because there's going to be a writing portion or, or in other words, not a writing portion, but a uh, presentation that you'll have to make. You can make it on Google Slides or PowerPoint, but basically the presentation is going to be all the stuff that we've just been talking about. Okay. How will this agreement benefit people in your state specifically? Well, I'm from California and... California, as you know, shares a border with Mexico, so it allows um, it allows us to bring over goods uh, across the border pretty simply. Um, so, in other words, we're able to get um, fruits and vegetables from Mexico. We're able to get um, a lot of cheap products um, from Mexico manufacturing. So, those are some of the ways that we directly benefit as Californians. If you're from another state, then you might talk about how other ways that it might have impacted your specific state. 
Okay, but for Californians, yeah, I would mention the agriculture for one, for sure. And then also the fact that we share a border and it kind of, since we have that free trade agreement and a lot of places mention this as well, that, you know, it eases tensions between countries. So that's good. If, you know, if we have a border with someone, we want there to be a good relationship with that country. So um, the fact that NAFTA has helped uh, make a good relationship between the countries, um, it's good for Californians and anyone else that's sharing a border with California. Um, okay, then once you get to this, basically you're just going to make a PowerPoint or a Google Slides presentation, and I want you to just use the information used here, okay? Just use the information. You can put the exact same wording that you put here, just so the better you answer these questions, the better this will come out. Use images. Um, so, you know, you can grab pictures from the internet and put them on there and make it look all nice and neat. 12 slides is what you need. And, um, you know, appropriate graphics, you know, pictures. Okay. Well, I hope that that all made sense. I hope you're able to get through it. Uh, I hope I gave you enough guidance. Um, I do suggest using NAFTA. Um, if not that, then want a different current free trade agreement. It's hard to find stuff that they're negotiating now in Congress. Um, but so anyway, with that, take care and I'll see you next time.